Well, kia ora. Welcome to our online service. My name's Cameron, I'm the pastor here at Village Baptist, and I'm really glad that you made your way to be with us today. Now today, you might have noticed that our online service is looking a little different, and that's because in our service today, uh, we've got a missions-focused service. And with some of the sensitivities around global missions at the moment, we just thought it would be important to keep that offline for the time being. But what that means is we've got a special service lined up for you joining us online with a speaker from Kerry Baptist College, which I know you're going to enjoy. But in the meantime, I've got one notice that I want to share with you. And that's that with February, we're entering our February promo, and that is Find Your Fit. And so why don't you watch this promo to find out a little bit more about that. Let me ask you a question. What's the difference between a guest and a family member? Instinctively, we might say a guest's stay is temporary, but when I visit my parents, my stay is temporary, but I'm more than a guest. We might say it's about blood, about biological relationship, but we all know members of our family who we consider members of our family, but they aren't biologically related to us. So maybe it's about a commitment of relationship. But again, I've got friends who I've been committed to for decades, but they aren't a member of my family. It can be hard to know when you move from being a guest to a member of the family. But there is one sign that you've made that transition. When you move from being waited on to helping with the dishes, from being served dinner to bringing a plate, when you move from being served to serving alongside others. That's why across the month of February, we want to help you find your fit, your place, your role in church life so that you can enter into the fullness of family life here at Village Baptist and make a difference through serving others. The great thing about Village Baptist is there's so many opportunities to serve. There really is something for everyone. So keep your eyes peeled for short interviews that will be coming out throughout the month of February. But if you really want to get ahead of the game, then check out villagebaptist.org.nz forward slash find your fit for more information so that this year you can become a member of the family. Hi, I'm Rachel Witherford, the Kids Ministry Director here at Village Baptist. What we want for our kids is to have every opportunity to learn about Jesus, both through words and actions. We want seeds planted and questions asked as kids explore what following Jesus is all about for them. To provide this space, we have a lot of fun. The kids get to truly be themselves, noisy, messy, funny, chatty, and just relax. Through multimedia, stories, games, crafts, scripture, and chats, we have the awesome privilege to come alongside kids and show them Jesus. We want kids' ministry to be a place that the kids want to be every Sunday and get excited about what they can experience and learn. If you're keen to get involved and do life with the kids, there is a space for you. We have groups in a range of ages. Generally, the younger groups are quieter, but the noise gets louder the older they get. If you have a heart for leading, there are opportunities to do that and connect with the kids as a group. But if you see yourself more as a supporter, lending a hand, one-on-one -on -one with the kids over a craft or colouring in, that is just as valuable and we'd love to have you on board. I'm just going to put it out there. As a team, Kids Ministry is one of the best. We don't just let the kids have all the fun. We spend time together creating our own family. I'd love to chat to you about where you could find your fit in Kids Ministry. So send me an email at kids at villagebaptist.org.nz or come find me on Sunday mornings out in the kids' space. I'm normally the one sweeping up the glitter. You know, finding a place to serve in church life really is one of the best ways to get connected. So let me encourage you to make contact with the office or one of our ministry leaders so that you can find your fit, your place to serve in church life this year. But as we begin the service, would you join me in prayer? Heavenly Father, we thank you that in your love, you are faithfully committed to us, such that wherever we find ourselves, both wherever we find ourselves physically and emotionally, that you are with us. And so God, I pray for all those who are joining and watching online. Be Emmanuel, God with them, we pray. Give to them your love 
and speak over them those words of affirmation, I pray. In Jesus' name, amen. I love you, Lord. Oh, your mercy never fails me. And all my days I've been held in your hands. From the moment that I wake up until I lay my head, and I will sing of the goodness of God. And all my life you have been Hello friends, um, welcome to our place here in Whanganui. Um, we have been here for about six to seven years. We came down from South Auckland where I was a Baptist pastor at Manarewa Baptist for five years. Um, I don't know where you are, but this is where I am. And just 300 meters that way is the Whanganui River, the Te Awa. And we have this wonderful, beautiful section made up of flax and protected trees and so on. Uh, it's a gift. And really it's on that topic that I want to kind of share with you this morning. And it's in and around gifts that we receive. Uh, so you're probably watching this post-Christmas. So did you score well when it came to Christmas presents? 
you know, at my age and stage, you don't usually score that well. Um, people just give you bits and pieces, which, you know, to be honest, is a little bit of a disappointment. Um, and even the older you get uh, uh, when it comes to birthday presents or birthday gifts, uh, at my age and stage, again, it's back to bits and pieces. But I'll have to say this, when it comes for me to give birthday presents to my wife, Ruby, I plan it over a whole year. But what she does is that she leaves it to the very last minute. So I kind of get these bits and pieces. But anyway, putting all that aside. Um, and then, of course, there are other types of gifts that we receive, especially when we become... Uh, followers of Jesus. I mean, we get the gift of salvation, you know, life change, uh, which is a wonderful thing. Uh, we get the, the gift of um, the local church. You know, this is where we inherit a hundred other brothers and a hundred other sisters and a hundred, you know, aunties and uncles and so on. I mean, when I became a Christian in my early 20s and I walked into a local church and I began to experience the hundredfold when it comes to brothers and sisters and uncles and aunts, I thought this is the best thing in town. But what we also receive is the gift of the Holy Spirit. And it's basically in and around that gift, the gift of the Spirit, that I want to share with you uh, today. Let me ask you another question, and it goes like this. Just imagine that this year, you as a church, you had to choose your team. You know, you had to choose your team in terms of mission and ministry. What criteria would you use? I mean, what kind of guidelines? I mean, some. so if I put up a number of Cs, for example, you have character. But then you also have, uh, then you also have, um, competency, and then you also have chemistry. So I'll just limit it to three. There are others. If you had to rank those three, you know, character, chemistry, competency, how would you rank them? You know, normally, in normal, ordinary times, I would have probably put character at the top, and then chemistry, in other words, uh, the person we want in this particular role has got to be the type of person that can be a team player with these other team players that we've currently got in this area of mission and ministry. And then I probably would have put competency as number three. Um, but, you know, I think we are not living so much these days in ordinary times. I think we are living in kind of particular times. Uh, and the challenge for the season that we're currently in is, I believe, rightly or wrongly, you know, we need more competent people. Yes, who can still play with other team members, do it well. And yes, who have still got characters that can be trusted. But I think the particular challenge of our times is in the area of competency. You know, where people are good at what they do when it comes to mission and ministry and local church. Um, they just, they have that kind of, um, I don't know, that divine ability, that divine enabling to do that which they are seeking to do. Um, and that is the, that is what we're talking about here when it comes to spiritual gifting. To have a spiritual gift is to receive a divine spirit-enabled ability to do that which in different circumstances you may not be able to do. I mean, let me give you an example from my own life. So I became a Christian when I was, uh, you know, kind of late teenage years, early 20s. Um, I came from a non-Christian home. I found myself hitchhiking through the country. I was in Christchurch. I had nowhere to live. And uh, in those days in Christchurch, there was a short white fella who used to get up in the public square and, and, and started to preach to the gathering crowd. And at the same time, there was this tall, cloaked, hooded person, pre-Harry Potter, by the name of the wizard. And he used to get up as well and speak to the gathering crowd. And, and they, they were in this kind of competition and then they would turn on each other and there would, then there would be a confrontation. And, you know, I used to turn up every lunchtime to hear this 
um, thinking that this has got to be the only entertainment in Christchurch. And then there was one particular day where a friend of the short white fellow with a big black Bible, he came and sat down next to me and he said to me, Mick, where do you live? And to cut a long story short, I, ha I told him that I lived anywhere, you know, anywhere, literally. I was a rough sleeper. I would gate crash at other people's places. And he, he was staggered by this, such that what, Many months later, he said to me, Mick, come with me. And I went with him and he went into this house and I followed him and he went into his bedroom and I followed him again. And then he shut the door. And then he opened the wardrobe and took a suitcase from the top of the wardrobe and filled some of the suitcase with items of clothing from the wardrobe. And he closed the, war uh, the wardrobe and he went to his bedroom drawer and he said, see ya. And I said, what? And he said, yes, I've had this room paid up for months in advance. It's all yours. And by the way, um, everything in it is yours. And there's another fellow that lives in this house and his name is Bruce. And with that, he, he closed the door and I didn't see him for years. And I looked around this room and I thought, not bad. There's some good stuff here. And, um, and then I noticed in a coffee table next to the bed, there was a Bible. And I thought, who's not to want to read the Bible after an incredible demonstration of love? So I picked up this Bible and I saw another demonstration of love. You know, the gift of Jesus, the gift of life change, the gift of a new leader in my life. And again, to cut another long story short, I got down on my knees uh, one Easter Monday morning and I said to this Jesus, this King, this Lord, this Savior, I now give away my life for the rest of my life to your purposes. And at that point, I heard an inaudible whisper. And the inaudible whisper was, I want you to be a speaker to many different people in many different places. So in a sense, that was the calling at conversion that was laid on my life. And what I have discovered since then, that God and his generosity has given me the spiritual gifting to enable me to, in a sense, walk into that calling and fulfill that calling. And since then, because of this spiritual gifting, I have spoken to hundreds and thousands of people around the world. You know, I can think of um, when I was in Fiji, I got invited to speak to the army and the commandos that had got caught up in a coup and I was taken out onto Nukalau Island. And, you know, I spoke to these people. I can think of Bali, where people had recently returned from the bombings that occurred over there. And some of them were in crutches and bandages and somehow... I was in that particular place and I was asked to speak to these wounded people and their relatives. I can think of being in London where there were 10,000 people in front of me. I can think of earlier last year where I was a keynote speaker at Festival One where I spoke to about 6,000 people and now I'm speaking with you. So what you see in front of you is a kind of a, a spiritual gift at work. Now, Please don't get me wrong here. Some people who have heard me speak, they've kind of basically said, oh, Mick, you've got the gift of the gab. You've got the knack. You know, you've got that kind of natural ability. No way. Prior to Jesus saying to me, I want you to be a speaker, I had not given one talk in my life at all. So what you see in front of you is not a kind of a, a natural ability. I mean... There, there is a place. There is, there is a place for natural abilities. Don't get me wrong. I mean, there was a guy in New Zealand a, a number of years ago, and he, and he won the, I think, international Scrabble competition. And when they interviewed him, he said, "I don't know. Ever since I was young, I just had this ability, this knack. I call those creation gifts, birthright gifts." But there are these other kind of gifts that you get at redemption when you come to Jesus, and they are spiritual gifts enabled by the Holy Spirit. Now, here's the thing. The research tells us that three quarters of those who are in our local church, they do not know the spiritual gifts that they have. Did you hear that? So if that research is right, when it comes to your particular local church, three quarters of you will not know your particular spiritual gifts. And what has happened in our churches, and I'm, I'm not wanting to be unkind here, 
But what has happened in our churches is that we've taken a more volunteer approach to, you know, uh, to the things that need to be done in mission and ministry in and through our local church. So, you know, a, a well-meaning leader will get up and say, look, we've got mainly music here, we've got Alpha here, we've got, you know, the property here, we've got management over here, and we've got this over here, and we've got the visitation of elderly people over here, and we've got the Sunday school over here. Who would like to volunteer? And so people put their hands up, hopefully, and, and well done then. You know, I'm not wanting to take a dig at volunteers. But the thing is, the founder of our movement, Jesus Christ, didn't want our movement, our local churches, to be kind of volunteer-driven. Okay? Rather, what Jesus does as the Lord of the church, he comes to each one of us and he says, I choose you. I want you to be on my team. But I want you to play in this position. And I'm going to enable you to play in that position through a spiritual gift that I'm going to give you. I don't want you to play over here. That's for someone else with a different gifting. I want you to play over here. Now, for us to know that, to experience that, to live that, what we need to know is our calling and secondly, the spiritual gifting that will enables, enable us to fulfill that calling. Um, and thus this passage and I'm going to read it out and it's in 1 Corinthians 12 and it goes like this verse 1 now about things relating to the Spirit's work my brothers and sisters I don't want you to remain ignorant you know that when you were still non-Christians you were led off carried away again and again after all sorts of things so I want to make it clear to you that nobody who is speaking to you by God's Spirit ever says, you know, Jesus is cursed, and nobody can say Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. There are different types of spiritual gifts, but the same Spirit. There are different types of service, but the same Lord. Um, now, did you pick up some of those things in there? I mean, he's talking about the Spirit. He's talking about spiritual gifts, but he says this, when it comes to the Spirit's work, I don't want you to remain ignorant. And the research tells us that three quarters of our current local churches are ignorant when it comes to what is the spiritual gift that they have been given. So my next question is, how do you get to know the, the gifts that God has given you? I mean, how do you get to know? But look, I came across this, this wonderful set of five questions that you can ask yourself. And these are like signposts that can kind of hint at or signal possibly what your spiritual gifting is. So I'm going to go through these very quickly. And the first one is, um, you know, do you have a sense of positive anticipation for the preparation process? Now, let me explain that. You know, um, when it comes to public speaking, that's possibly my area of gifting. And I get invited to speak on a particular topic. It, it, it's, it's that I just can't wait to do the preparation. I love the preparation just as much as the presentation. So if you're wanting to know what your spiritual gifting is, what is it? that you love to do, and it's not just the presenting, but it's the preparing. So you take some, you take something like the gift of hospitality. You know, there are some people when it comes to hospitality, you know, they're planning for weeks and they love it. They just love it. They don't, they don't just love it when the people arrive through the door. But you see, there are other people when it comes to hospital hospitality, and they can't wait for people to come through the door. But, oh, all that preparation work is like a burden. So your spiritual gifting will be in an area where you love the preparation work just as much as the presentation work. Okay, here's the second one. Is there an area in your life where you not only love the preparation, but as you're doing the preparation, 
I don't know. You just get so super creative. You know, so let's take the gift of hospitality. In the preparation, they think, oh, yes, you know, brainwave. Oh, you know, I could do that and I could do that and then I could do that. Um, so creativity just flows. Let's go to the third one. Do you live with the absolute conviction that this particular area that you love to prepare in, that you get super creative in, but you have this absolute conviction that this is going to change a person's life? You know, this is the thing that's going to do it for them. You know, if we get them to our home, if they come through the door, this could be life altering for them. Okay, fourthly, I mean, do you, in this particular area, whatever it be, administration, be it finance, be it leadership, be it mercy, be it giving, but I'm just using the gift of hospitality at this point. I mean, do you get unsolicited affirmation? In other words, you know, you don't go looking for affirmation, but once the person has left that night or however long they were with you, I don't know, they send you an email, they send you a text, and they say, oh, being at your place, being with you. And and each and every time you do this hospitality gig, I don't know, people just will time and time again come back to you, affirming that which you've done. And then lastly, the last signpost, do you get a sense of God smiling on you? I mean, so when I do this public speaking thing, you know, even now, I get a sense that the heavens are opened and God is smiling. He is pleased. This is a good work that he's asked me to do. Similarly with you. When do you get that sense of God smiling on you? So those are the five kind of signposts. You know, the first one, you love the preparation. The second one is that you just get super creative in that particular area. The third one is you have this absolute conviction it's going to change the world. The fourth one, you get unsolicited affirmation. And the last one is God is smiling on you. Look, I am noticing that there are a lot of people in our churches that, you know, when it comes to the end of the year or the beginning of a new year, and they think about doing, you know, this program, supporting that, this mission, this ministry, whatever it might, might be. I don't know. There's an increasing tiredness that is kind of seeping in, creeping in, settling in. And people are complaining more and more about a, I don't know, a, 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 a kind of a, a burnout. And they've had enough. And you know, if you ask me what's behind that, you see, if you're doing certain mission and ministry, certain duties that don't kind of coincide with your gifting, then that will make for a sense of frustration. And when you have a frustrated person, you've got someone who is losing their strength and lacking in joy. You know, I never forget in my last church, we did a review of all the mission and ministries. And there was one particular bloke and he had put his hand up as a volunteer to help out in, in mainly music. And we did this review and, 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 and we went around each one and we said, is this what you love to do? Is this is what really, is this your sweet spot? Is this your area of kind of gifting and passion? And, and, and this person said, no, you know, I'm just being faithful. I just want to help out. And then we asked him, what would you really love to do? You know, where is your sweet spot? Where is your area of passion? You know, where, I don't know, it's just life-giving. It coheres with who you are instead of going against the grain. And he said, oh, I'd just love to get together with a bunch of blokes in the neighborhood where we could fix up cars. He said, um, he said, I, I just kind of have that, you know, that practical gifting, that, that, that kind of, um, encouragement, gifting, and so on. And so we said, well, why don't you go and do it? You know? Why don't you do that? Do that what you love to do. Do that which is in your sweet spot. Do that which you are impassioned about. Do that which you have gifting for. So there you are, friends. That's my, hopefully, inspiration for the coming year. Uh, 
Let me pray. Our God, you have said in your word in 1 Timothy chapter 4 and verse 14, you know that uh, we are to, we are to um, not neglect the spirit that you have given to us. Not neglect the gift of the spirit that you have given to us. You've told us in 1 Timothy chapter 4 and verse 15, in fact, that we're to devote our lives, give our lives over to the gift that you've given to us. And you've told us in 2 Timothy uh, that we're to rekindle into flame the gift that you have given to us. I pray this for these dear, pre dear people who are watching this, this video presentation. May they not neglect the gift. May they give their lives over to that which you've given to them. And even if some here know the gift, but they've been neglecting the gift that you've given to them, help them to fan it into flame. Help them to rekindle it. And when I pray this prayer for the sake of this church, for the sake of mission and ministry in the church and through the church into the world, and for the sake of these dear good people, May they come into your purposes, I pray. In Jesus' name, amen. Let the King of my heart be the mountain where I run, the fountain that I drink from, oh, is my song. Let the King of my heart be the shadow where I hide, the ransom for my life, oh, he is my song. You are good, good, oh, you are good, good, oh, you are good, you are good.
And that brings us to the end of today's service. Thank you for joining us. Let me encourage you. If you haven't found your fit in church life yet, make contact with the office. Tap the shoulders of one of the ministry leaders in church life. Jump on the website, villagebaptist.org.nz forward slash find your fit so that you can find your fit, your place of service in church life, that you might be increasingly connected to the church you worship with. But as you go into the week ahead, may you do so in the blessings of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen.